Now, when we program C Sharp, there's a lot of different methods and classes and properties that we need to remember, but we can't always remember all of them. So there is actually some built-in features inside Visual Studio that will help you look up different methods and that sort of thing if you forget some methods that you might want to apply inside your code. So in this video here, I want to talk about these different features as well as on how to comment inside your code. Since commenting is something that you need to do from time to time, because right now you might be creating a script that you remember what exactly it does, but further down the road, you might not remember what it does anymore. So creating comments is also something that is important to do inside your code from time to time. As you can see here, I have the same project as last time, and we're just gonna continue building inside this project here. So what I want to do is I just simply want to start out by creating a simple variable, and then I'm gonna show you how to look up different methods we can apply to that variable. So if I were to go in here and actually drag my keyboard over so I can actually write something, there we go. So what I want to do is I want to create a variable. I'm just gonna create a string type variable. I'm gonna call it name, and I'm gonna set it equal to Daniel. And notice here that I'm going to use all lowercase in order to create my name inside the, the string. So what I want to do here is I want to perform some kind of method on it that does something to this data here. Maybe I want to make it all uppercase, and in that case then, you know, if I don't remember the method that I need to use, I can look this up inside Visual Studio. So if you were to go up inside the top of Visual Studio Inside View, you'll notice that we have something called a object browser. Control Alt J is the shortcut there. So if you were to click this, you're gonna notice that we go into this different uh, window and you can go back and forth between your program up here at the top. There's a few tabs you can go back and forth in there. So if I were to go inside the object browser, I can search for something like the string class. You might not know that, but the string variable type is actually a class you have inside the system namespace inside .NET. And again, this might be something that you don't know. So let me go and explain how I know that it is in fact that. So if I were to go up inside the search field here, you can go ahead and type string, search for it. And then it's going to find this uh, piece of information here that it says we're inside the system namespace and inside the system namespace, we have a class called string. And you just know that because if you were to go down here, it does actually say public seal class string. So it is actually telling us the string is a class and it is inside the system namespace. And if you want to check out the system namespace, we can also click that over here by clicking the, the system name that we have down at the bottom here. As you can see, it's actually gonna uh, load up the system namespace here. And we can check it out, we can open it up, we can check all the different sorts of things you have inside the system namespace. But let's just go ahead and take a step back here again. So Going back, we're gonna go inside the string class. And what you'll notice here on the right is that we have a list of all the different methods that might be part of this string class. So let's go ahead and talk about namespaces and classes again, because this is sort of relevant to that. So like we talked about previously, we have something called .NET, which is what we're using right now together with C Sharp in order to create our applications. .NET has a bunch of different namespaces inside of it, which are all responsible for certain categories of things we might want to do inside our applications. Now for basic standard things that we just use all the time inside one of our C Sharp applications, we have the namespace called the system namespace. Now inside the system namespace, we have a lot of different classes. Now bear in mind that if we were to go inside our program that we're writing here, this is a namespace that we are creating as our program. And in here, we just have one class called program. If I wanted to, inside this namespace that we have here, we have the curly brackets, which defines that whatever is inside the curly brackets is part of that namespace. I could actually go underneath here and I could create a class, call it Daniel and just simply create this Daniel class that has a bunch of different methods inside of it. So we have a bunch of different classes under each namespace. And when you use something like, for example, string, which to define some kind of data type or var, or if you want to create something called a byte or character or uh, integer, then we all have these as classes inside the system namespace. So when we need to look up what kind of methods we can perform on certain things inside our code, for example, a string data type, then we can simply go in and look up the string class inside our object browser, and it will give us a bunch of different ideas to the different methods we have available to us when we want to do something to uh, some kind of string data. So we'll just scroll down to the bottom here where we have something related to uh, making your 
uh, string to lower characters or upper upper characters, you know, uppercase and that sort of thing. Uh, we can go down here and see we have one called to upper, just as an example, and it will give you a description of what exactly this specific method does down here at the bottom here. So as it says, summary returns a copy of this string converted to uppercase. So if I want to make my name uppercase, I can do that using this method here. If we were to go back inside the program, go down to my name, I could go ahead and take my name and then set it equal to a new value, which is going to be my name that has applied this method to it. So I can say to upper. And then I can just go ahead and close it off with parentheses and a semicolon. So what we're doing here is we're taking a declared variable, which is name, and we apply a method to it called to upper, which takes name, makes it uppercase, and then assigns this new value to the existing variable we had up here, which was equal to Daniel, but now it becomes equal to Daniel as uppercased. And again, I just do want to point out that we don't have to redeclare this variable down here by saying string because we already declared this variable on top of here. And you can see it actually gives me an error because I declared the same variable multiple times. Remember, when we declare a variable by writing string in front of it, we create the variable. We say that, okay, here is a new variable. So when we need to refer to it later on, we already created it, so we don't need to declare it anymore. So I can just simply take the name of the variable and then do something to it. So, which is why I don't write string down here in front of the, the variable. Um, we could also do something different. So instead of setting the same variable equal to a new value, if I want to keep this uh, data up here for later for something else, then I could create a new variable so I could go down here and say I want to create a new string, which is going to be new uh, name, like so, and then apply the new value to this new variable here. So now we have two variables. If I were to go inside my uh, console and actually write it out, I can say we want to refer to the console class because that is a class we have inside the system namespace as well. And I can say I want to apply a method to it. So we're doing the exact same thing as we did on top of here uh, called right line. And again, we can do a shortcut for this if you want to. So I can say WL. And as you can see, it actually says right line down here. So I can just go ahead and say right line, which like I said, is a method. And then we can just go ahead and print out Daniel if you wanted to. And we can just go ahead and do that by referring to our string uh, variable called name, print it in here. Then I'm going to copy paste my console right line, put it below here, and then I'm gonna put the new variable inside of it, so new name. So now we should, inside our console, get two different pieces of information. We should get Daniel, and then Daniel as uppercased. So if we were to run this program with control F5, you can see that we will get Daniel and Daniel uppercased. So this is how I can look up information inside the Optic Browser, which is going to be very useful for you if you don't really think this is very user friendly, I think it is, but some people might not because it's too technical for them. They can also go to Microsoft website and look up the different methods and such that you have inside the .NET framework. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to write comments inside your code, because in some cases I might not remember the code later on. So I need to write a comment to sort of remind future Daniel what exactly the code does. So inside my code, what I can do is I can create a comment. So I can write forward slash forward slash, which creates this green text, which means that right now I can write a comment to myself. And this is not going to be interpreted when we compile the code. It's just going to ignore this because it's a comment. So I could say, hi, future Daniel, this code prints, let's say Daniel and then I know exactly what it does. Uh, if I want to write multiple lines of code instead of just saying forward slash forward slash, I could also, if we were to go down here, write uh, forward slash star. I need, to, I need to get a new setup for my keyboard here because this is getting troublesome to write. Um, and then we can just go ahead and say star forward slash and then whatever goes in between here is going to be part of the comment and we can actually go down to multiple lines and keep writing. So as you can see, that sort of works that way. So if you need to have a lot of commenting, then you can do that using this method here. And it just wrote a star there, I don't want to have that. 
There we go. We could also, if you don't want to click backspace all the time, you could also say Control X, and then it just deletes the line, which is a nice shortcut to have. Um, but besides this, I think this is what I want to show regarding uh, helping yourself for later. Because a lot of people tend to not want to help themselves when it comes to programming. I noticed that a lot of people that I've taught I noticed that a lot of people that I used to go to school with at the university, they would always ask others for help instead of trying to solve things themselves. So knowing how to look up information inside, for example, the Arctic browser is a skill that you need to polish in order to be able to solve issues yourself without having to ask others constantly. So this is something that is really recommended that you do just so you can get good at it in the future if you need to look up something. So. I hope you guys enjoyed. I also hope you guys enjoyed the green screen. I'm, I'm just sort of testing it out to see if it does actually work. Um, so hopefully this did actually work out fine. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.